25 years ago, the Dayton Peace Agreement brought an end to the horrible war in Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, and uh, created a new country, Bosnia-Herzegovina, consisting out of two entities, uh, the Republika Srpska of the Serb uh, entity and uh, the Federation of uh, the Bosniaks and the Croats. Still in this country, ethnic divisions and ethnic criteria play a big role, a too big role because many issues the country has, like many others, of course, like the environmental issue, the social issue, the employment uh, questions are far from being solved. The younger generation thinks differently. The younger generation thinks about these issues which are important for their life and uh, which should be solved or nearly solved in order to create uh, new opportunities for the young people also to stay in the country. We asked uh, several of these young people to give their opinion. We asked people in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, but also in Vienna, coming from the country, what their issues is, what their ideas and opinions uh, for the future is. Uh, and we will also have in the coming weeks uh, some two panel discussions in order to discuss uh, the future of the country because the future of Bosnia-Herzegovina is very important also for the future of the whole Western Balkan. My name is Emila Karacic. I work for the International Republican Institute in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm the deputy program director. I've been with IRI for the past, well, almost nine years now. And before that, I worked for the Ministry of Civil Affairs of BIH. I started a program that I'm particularly proud of here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's called the Advanced Leadership in Politics Institute. Uh, the program has been running for the past three years. And so far, we had two classes. Each class had 23 members, uh, basically young political leaders from 15 political parties across the aisle. So we have center right and center left and social liberal political parties all around the country, um, young people who are eager to learn more about political processes and really participate in a meaningful way in discussions about BIH's future. Uh, it's quite an intensive program, a professional development program that is not only skills, you know, focused on skills building, but uh, which is, in my opinion, even more important, focused on critical thinking. Uh, we are trying to create a really safe space um, and safe environment for young political leaders in BIH to discuss um, really important issues uh, with decision makers as well. So invite political party leaders and elected officials to not share necessarily their views with young people only, but to allow young people to ask tough questions, to present their opinions. And really what we want to make sure uh, is that we have a space where those young leaders are treated as equal partners, which they um, absolutely are. And unfortunately, you know, the current climate and the current um, political situation Young people are often sidelined, especially when it comes to decision-making and participating in uh, some really important discussions. So what we do, and I applaud our program officer and program lead on this program, Anas Almanovic, for doing that um, religiously and a really effectively, is engage with young people during those modules to motivate them to work together because the overall goal of the program is to foster cross-party cooperation and dialogue. And I am, I think, most proud of the fact that in those three years, those 46 young leaders have had more than 170 outreach activities, cross-party outreach activities. So I think in the current political climate, um, everyone is sort of being told that it's impossible to work um, across party lines, that um, center-right parties work together, center-left parties turn to each other, but you rarely see cooperation across party lines, you know, when you disregard ideology, but really look at the grand picture, like where do we want to see Bosnia in five or 10 years? And um, I don't have many examples of that cross-party cooperation when it comes to, you know, like the actual political leaders here in Bosnia. 
But there are really some wonderful examples of cross-party cooperation among young people. And I think that is the most encouraging thing for me personally. Um, what I've learned from this program is that they are, once given the opportunity to interact, really able to open their mind and maybe set aside some of their prejudice and bias and um, put themselves in the shoes of others and understand other people's perspectives. So, for example, we had outreach activities like they wrote together, you know, blog posts about the migrant crisis and you have there a representative of a center-right party and a center-left party um, jointly proposing what our country should be doing to um, help migrants, but also help local communities that are most affected by um, the migrant crisis currently in BIH. Or we have, you know, LP members who started joint podcasts, again, you know, from different political parties, actually sitting down together and every week producing episodes where they discuss the, per the current political situation in the country. And I think it is... Um, unfortunate that it takes an international organization or in our case an American organization to create those spaces. I think um, as you know as a society or as a country we need to look uh, into ways and you know find new approaches how to bring young people together from all across the country. I've seen over the years and I've been working in this field for well, almost 10 years now, um, that we, you know, when we have those programs, when local NGOs or some international or NGOs organize events, they bring people from the same party or from the same party family together. Uh, the fact that we work with 15 political parties um, allows us to actually create um, opportunities for young people from in some cases, really remote areas of BIH and smaller communities that are often, often overlooked and smaller political parties to meet their peers and meet their counterparts. And, um, and you know, in some cases, really realize that they have a lot in common. And um, I think political leaders, unfortunately, in this country have for years um, told and have just created this narrative that there is so much that divides us. Um, it, it was hard for young people to see what brings us together. And every time they meet, every time we have the opportunity to bring them all together, I see that, you know, someone from Republika Srpska is sharing the same, the exact same issues that someone from Herzegovina or Sarai was sharing. Um, and uh, I've been really proud of the way that they've bonded and created mutual trust. And when we do, and we do those endline interviews, I'm, I'm a monitoring and evaluation kind of person. So I do endline interviews with all of them when they leave the program. I think, you know, one of the most um, amazing outputs that we have in this program is that those bonds are created, that they, um, have become friends, that they reach out to each other when they face a, an issue in their own party and seek advice from their friends in, you know, the other canton, the other entity, and they don't look at, you know, what divides them, but really what brings them together. And that's a lesson that I think uh, political leaders need to learn from, you know, younger generations.